Well, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Logistics Executive TV uh, on the uh, book review series. Today, I'm joined by uh, an entrepreneur, a founder, uh, a long-time industry specialist in logistics and supply chain from many years ago. I'm very pleased to say I've known uh, this gentleman for over 20 years. Um, and uh, today, we're talking about a, a book that he has published recently. He's an executive coach of some note in Melbourne, Australia, Connor O'Malley. Hey, Connor, thanks for joining us. Absolute pleasure, Kim. Thanks very much for the opportunity of uh, of sharing insights around uh, around my book. Thanks very much. Thanks, Connor. And of course, we've recently interviewed you uh, in regards to your executive coaching business, which focuses on being and doing, as opposed to a lot of the mainstream areas of coaching. Um, and but you've uh, notably published a very successful book called Trust. And today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the book. Um, for you to give us a bit of a review and uh, maybe we can start by you giving us a heads up as to where the hell you ever got the idea to publish a book because I've had to uh, contribute to a couple of chapters of the books over the years and I must say even completing a chapter has taken me many, many months and a lot of stress. So tell us all about the book and how you came up with the idea of publishing. Thanks, Kim. Well, the uh, the idea of a book uh, came to me in two, in two ways. One was I felt that I had something to share, and uh, arguably a book is a is a great way of uh, great way of doing that. And then the more that I work as an executive coach with my own coaching practice, um, which is that's an oxymoron in itself because it's not my coaching practice; it's for others. It's for who I <laughs> seek to serve. Um, I, I because I'm not working as a business and growing a business, if you like, with multiple coaches and that that space, then it became clear to me that having a clear message um, and a subject matter expertise, as well as your expertise in coaching, um, became it is an important um, part of, of, of a coaching practice business model. Um, and very specifically, where did the idea of trust came? Well, it was actually in this very room, um, maybe 18 months or so ago, where I literally was at 4.15 in the morning, got out of bed, came into this room and scribbled like a, uh, I'm no Beethoven or Einstein, but like a mad professor, if you like. And on, the, on a whiteboard, there was a model of trust. And I felt that that was it. It was incredible. I thought, there it is. There's my book. And then you go, oh, no, actually, that's a whiteboard with a load of scribbles on it. <laughs> now, how do you turn that into a book? And then very quickly, if there's any aspiring book uh, writers listening to this, uh, I went on a journey of discovery of those who'd written books and ask, how the heck do you do it? Uh, finding out the route between a self-published uh, book and a published house, you know, a book published by a house. Um, and then I did work with a book coach, which I found very, very important to me in terms of helping me structure my thoughts and giving me a process. And then actually working, I chose the self-publishing route and then work, here's an oxymoron as well, a self-publishing publisher. So actually, I, I don't feel I self-published that book. I'm ever grateful to my book coach, Kath Walters and Michael Hanrahan from Publish Central. And uh, without those two amazing uh, characters, uh, I don't think my book, Trust, begins and ends with self would uh, would have ever have been published. Good stuff. So I've, I've read a little bit about the book and some of the reviews online. T talk to us about how you, I mean, that is an amazing uh, effort to, to talk about and define and explain uh, your thoughts on trust. Tell us in, you know, 30, 30 seconds to a minute how you define trust. Okay, well, the, the very headline, very clear that trust for me is a verb, which means delivering on your commitments to self and others consistently. Okay. And I well, felt if I'd, if I'd written a book on trust, I'd, I'd better have a, had an answer to this question. And, and that is it, delivering on your commitments to self and others consistently. Okay. And then at a level below that, uh, and you mentioned way of being and doing, that there are elements of trust, or I might say assessments of trust in both your domain of your being and doing. So in the space of being, it is, um, am I invested in your concerns? So do you feel that I'm invested in, uh, in your concerns? Okay. And am I vulnerable to your actions? So I need to make myself vulnerable to your actions. Yeah. 
And then in the domain of doing, it's actually delivering. So do I deliver consistently? Have I got the competency and capacity to deliver on my commitments to you? Okay. Who's your target audience for the book? Uh, so, so my target audience are CEOs, C-suite leaders. Um, to serve them, be a more effective leader of self, and hence this notion of trust is core to being a leader of self. And then they must also be a leader, not only of their team, not only of their business, but also I feel strongly today, leaders must be leaders in society. And I take the reader through a journey of trusting self, how to uh, trust one other person, if you like, more effectively and be trusted by that one other person, then leading into uh, collective trust in the nature of a team and how to build collective trust in a team. And then I actually take that into briefly into the notion of society and then a very, very brief kind of touch into the domain of universal energy, simply on the basis that, you know, is there something bigger than all of us that we um can find trust within. And arguably, if we do that, it begins and ends with self. Okay, good. Well, it's, uh, you, you've obviously given us some, some thought to put some uh, consolidation around some pretty big ideas. Very easy to, to go down a rabbit hole on a lot of this, I should imagine. Very another quick so. question, another quick question yeah. for you, quick fire question. If somebody, a leader, was was working with this book and you invited them to read it, and no doubt I'm sure you use it to support your coaching practice on occasions, um, what would be a couple of things at the headline level, big picture level, that you would hope that they would be able to take away from this book to make their leadership journey more meaningful or grease the rails on their leadership journey? Great, great question, Kim. Um, so you asked for two things. Let me go to two places. One is uh, the stories that we tell ourselves and actually almost in an existential way, stepping out of those stories and observing them and saying, why am I telling myself this story? How is it serving me? And is it opening me up to possibilities or is it closing me to possibilities with regards to uh, seeing the world differently? So I'd ask any leader or any person in the world, but let's say in the domain of leadership, to really ask themselves, what am I telling myself and does this serve me well or not? And if I make that very personal, and Kim, as you said, we've known for you know, each other for nine and 20 years, you know, my personal story was, unless I'm the CEO of a multi-million or multi-billion dollar uh, FMCG business, third-party logistics business, yeah. wholesale business, yeah. then I'm not a success and my career is not a success. Sure. Now, that served me well at times, mm -hmm. but as you know, we've known each other for many years, at mm -hmm. times that did not serve me well. Sure. So what stories are you telling yourself and are they opening you up to possibilities or closing you down? Yep. And then the second one is I do work in the space of physiology and energy and moods and emotions and being an observer of self, especially in the mood that we find ourselves in. And here's a statement is that our moods are a predisposition for action. Yep. Now, if anybody listening to that is okay and agrees with that statement that our moods are a dis predisposition for action. Okay, well, what, what am I feeling? What mood am I in? And again, is that um, a mood of anxiety? Is that a mood of re resignation or resentment, for example? And if we feel that, then arguably, again, we can't deal as effectively with uncertainty. We can't see possibilities. We, we're not able to be curious. So if we can self um, diagnose, if you like, and potentially with the support of a coach, the mood and the energy that we feel and yep. shift it where it's not serving as well, then again, I believe that we will be a far more effective leader of self and of others. Okay, excellent. Well, look, th thanks for explaining all that to us. I mean, that gives some great insight into the book. And, you know, I've certainly read a fair bit of it and I uh, highly recommend it. A Qu couple of more quick questions to round out the show today. Um, one, uh, I mean, I know you're on the speaking circuit as well. Uh, you speak to clients, you speak to organisations, you're on advisory boards for a number of organisations, community-based organisations, corporate as well. Um, what, what's, what sort of organisations invite you to speak? Um, and does it always include about the book or is there a different subject matter that you talk about? No, re recently my last uh, speaking engagement was with a... Um 
a major um, organisation here in Australia in the uh, in the mining services mining sector, where actually I was speaking on the on the uh, subject of allyship and women in leadership because one of my pro bono mentoring spaces is women in leadership, right. um, and a lot of the work that I do um, in that space the notion of trust, the notion of self-belief, the notion of self-confidence and trusting self is actually core to, uh, to, to that area. So that's an example where I've recently yeah. uh, you know, engaged with an organisation and, and had a, a public speaking engagement, if you like, with, with senior leaders in that, uh, in that team, uh, in, that, in that business. Hey, Connor, really appreciate you taking the time and uh, I know it's getting on where you are today in Melbourne. You've got a new government recently elected, so good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> the world's a very dynamic place at the moment. Leadership at government level is something that leaves a lot to be desired in most of the world from what I can see. So uh, maybe you can uh, angle your way into politics as well. Or some well, I, I, I'm <laughs> privileged to say that I do work with a CEO in uh, actually in the local government space here in Australia. So my, my coaching practice extends across a uh, number of different sectors and, and now okay. actually including yeah. local government. Good stuff. Really appreciate it. Connor, how do people get hold of you in terms of your coaching practice? If they want to know more about the book, um, tell us where people can reach you. Okay. My best place to reach me, thanks for asking, Kim, is on LinkedIn. So please reach out to me uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, my book website is www.trustself.net and uh, my website's on my LinkedIn. So they're, they're the two mm -hmm. best places. Good stuff. And people can see the spelling of, uh, of Connor O'Malley over there uh, where, you're, where you are and also uh, up here, my team has managed to put those details up here as well. Connor O'Malley, author, executive coach, uh, entrepreneur and golfing fanatic from what I understand. Um, thanks so much for sharing today. Uh, we wish you well and look forward to catching up with you in Australia soon. Brilliant. Thanks for the opportunity, Kim. Really appreciate it. Cheers, Connor.